Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. And today, for this video actually, I am going to work on the cover that I am making for my Dear Julie Julie, let's see, what is it? Just Junk, oh no, I've forgotten, let me look. June, Just Junk and Household Stuff, Junk Journal Challenge 2024. Sometimes those names are so hard to say. And actually making the cover is not one of the things that's on the list of the things that you have to make. So it's kind of a freebie for me. And so I'm going to do it with you. Now we were supposed to use like a macaroni or a cookie box, but I can't have wheat. So we don't have very many of those kind of things. I think that my shampoo and conditioner box will be just fine. <laughs> I hope it works anyway. If not, pretend you didn't see that. And I have this, and this is from a really old scrapbook photograph album that I got. And I just love the picture, and I've had it for a while, and I could never figure out what to do with it, and I think that this will be perfect. Now, what I want to do, I don't want this to be completely clear. Usually I leave it clear and have some floating stuff in there. I'm not doing that this time. But I do want to center the word photographs. So what I need to do is get on this line here, 8 to 14. So the difference between 8 and 14 is 6. And so 8 plus 3 needs to be 11. So my center is right here. And so I want to center that word photographs right there. But I also don't want to lose all of this up here. So, and I have this blank space down here. So I am going to use this line and slowly move this down until photographs is closer to the bottom. Now, I know that this is where I want it to be placed. I am going to take my bone folder. My desk is a hot mess as usual. I'm going to take my bone folder and I am just going to push it up against the edge of my box here. So that I've got a little indentation there for me to follow. And I'm not cutting this because I'm going to use the whole thing. Not cutting it, at least not yet. But I do want to know where to put my glue. Let's see, and I'm going to feel for where the spine is going to be. Increase that on both sides. Let's see. This side's harder to find, I think. And it might be because of the angle because I'm trying to hold this down. <laughs> And there we go. Now I know where I need my glue to be. And so I'm going to turn it over and I don't know if you can see those creases. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that line there and down here. And I'm going to just put my glue on. I make sure and I put a little bit more around the edges and then I just kind of skip around the middle just so that it doesn't bump up and do silly things. And I'm using Beacon 3-in-1, which is the same thing as Fabri-Tac, which is the same thing as Fabrifix, basically. All right, and I'm just going to take my cover, scoot it, back into where those lines, where I marked the lines. It's 
smooth that all out. That's not laying down because my clothespins are in the way and my corner rounder's in the way. Everything's in the way. And that's exactly how I wanted it. The next thing I'm going to do, I want this to wrap around the back. I don't want to lose these roses. I want to incorporate them into the outside of the journal as well. I left this part unglued because I want to add a different paper underneath of it. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to train my paper. I'm just going to very carefully, and this is old paper and I don't want to demolish it. I don't know what it's made out of. I think it's really, really cool. And I'm not gluing that down yet. What I am going to do is go ahead and train this side up too. And then I'm gonna glue it, both ends. Both of these ends. Train it up before I glue it so that I'm not having to fight it so much. I do have my clothespins here to help hold it down. I have a link to my favorites on Amazon. I am not, I don't get anything from it. I just like to share the things that I know that I like and that I think other people might find useful as well. And they're just pretty. And you know, you can have tools, you can have just regular tools and that's not a bad thing. It's good to have tools. I just like for my tools to be pretty if I have an option and had the option. I am going to use this paper, and it is from, let me get the paper pad out, preserved paper from DCWV. Used to know what that meant. Does it say on here? It does not. I can't remember. It stands for something. It's not just a bunch of letters. But I thought it was really, really pretty. And I thought it went well, and I've got it upside down. I thought it went well with the whole Thing that I am, the whole look that I'm going for on this. So I'm going to use this on the back side, not on the back side, on, huh, on the cover, and I'm going to overlap that onto it. And so I don't need it to be all the way over there. And so I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the other, with that. I'm going to line it up, get it straight, and figure out just how far out I need it to be. I, need, I want this to overlap it just a little, not a lot. Actually, it can overlap it a little bit more because I don't need it to be any thicker than that. And that's a half an inch. So I'm actually just going to go just past a half an inch on here. Again, making sure it's straight. And I'm going to use my bone folder again to find where that 
end is going to be. All right, so this is dry. All right, so that was dry and I've got this part cut and folded to wrap around that edge. I want to be able to see through here. And because I am going to put something back in here, um, but I need to pick out the paper that I'm going to use to finish covering the inside of this cover. All right, and this is one of Julie's Digitals. It's Lace Grunge, and I love it. I use it a lot. <laughs> and I actually have something printed on the back, and I don't want to use what's on the back, but it's showing up against that white. So I think I need to put something down. Let's see, is it doing it at the top too? A little. So I need to put some kind of a scrap down to cover that up. Let's see what. Have a piece of coffee dyed paper. And I think that that'll be dark enough. Yep, that works. All right, so let's do this. I need to mark where my opening is here. what's going to be the best way to do that I think I could try to do the bone folder thing here too maybe yep I can feel that I wasn't sure if with the plastic on it I would be able to tell harder to tell so I think that I'm going to go through and mark it again and I don't need all of this sheet so I am going to mark where I can cut that I don't even have to cut it, I can just tear it. I'll put that over here because I may use it elsewhere in the journal. This one's just going to be covered up. All right. Move this out of the way. I am going to get a ruler out. And I am going to, from corner to corner, cut. Let's get this straight. From corner, I'm having to feel. There's a corner. And there's a corner. I 
having to feel more than see. I think it's because my lights so that you can see. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. All right. Got this, got this. I need to glue them together. Do I want that to show, maybe? Yeah, I don't think so. All right, I wanna glue this to this. I'm not worried about where the X is because that part is not going to stay there. Do you want to make sure I put the glue on the <laughs> correct side? Oh, this is the one that's going... <laughs> ha! I just said I want to put it on the correct side and what did I do? I'm just going to wipe it off on there. And... It's probably going to glue itself to my work mat, and I'll just have to unstick it. If I didn't have anything on the back of the paper that I wanted to use, then all of this would have been unnecessary. So don't think that you have to do this. If yours does not have something on the back that you don't want showing through, then don't do this. You don't have to do all this. All right, glue back on the lid. And I am going to line this up so it's straight. And I'm going to put my ruler on that crease mark that I have. And I've got it lined up on my mat so that I can make sure that it's straight. I'm going to fold each of these back. Now for this step, just pretend you have one layer because you would be doing this. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and glue these down. And I'm going to cut off this excess. And those are not glued together, so I can use them separately, the, se the separate triangle shapes if I wish.
I said they weren't glued together. I think I got a little glue on this one. A little, but it's okay. All right, so that part is done. Well, let's see if it worked. <laughs> the moment of truth. Do not have that paper glued down yet. But I want to make sure that this looks right. And that's going to tuck up under here. Push it all the way over. There we go. And make sure everything's aligned. And then, what have I got in the, oh, my lid. And then this one will butt right up to that edge and this will come over. And that's gonna work. Now, before I glue, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this piece on. That, it, that I just made. I'm going to go ahead and glue that onto there. I'm going to be careful with this glue here because I don't want it to squish out onto the clear plastic of the package. This is going to be a little tricky. To lift that up because I have to scoot this under. You know what? I didn't think about that, but that's gonna have to come off just a hair. Because of wrapping this around, it actually makes it just a slight fraction, fraction smaller. And so it makes it just a little bit tight. And now I'm going to carefully put some glue up under here on this. Getting ready to put this on there, I need to make sure that I am where I want to be for my frame. this picture and I'm going to do what Julie first introduced to me a long time ago when I first started watching her channel is fussy tearing which it turns out I really kind of like ink around those torn edges and I tore toward me so that I would have that white fluffy edge or fuzzy or kind of rough edge. And I don't want the white on the edge of the photograph, so I'm taking a little bit of my brown and just kind of scooching over it.
And I think I'm going to pick out a sticker. I think I'll go with Dreamer of Dreams. All right. Before I push that down completely, I'm going to line this back up again and make sure it's where I want it to be. And nope, it's a little high. And a little to the left. Yep. And I am going to take my nail polish. Which is drippy. to be in drippy I just want to control it all right and I'm gonna let that set up before I do anything else to that the nail polish is dry glue is dry this is ready to be put together and so the first thing I'm going to do is when I fold this over I can see the white core of the scrapbook paper so I'm just going to take my ink and just run it along the edge you won't really see it but then what it really does is you don't see that white core which you would see the white core if you hadn't done this and so what we're wanting to do is actually just disguise it and hide it and make it blend into the background, I guess would be the, I don't know, would that be the correct term? We want it to fade into the woodwork. We want it to be a wallflower. We do not want it to stand out. Any of those terms that works for you, that's what we'll go with. actually have a video where I go through and explain why I do that. I'll link it below. And if you're interested, go watch it. If you're not, don't. <laughs> All right, I think we may be ready for the final assembly, at least of the cover base. I love how that looks. I think that looks fantastic. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue this little flap down. Get this lined up. 
Make sure everything is straight. Ooh, bad noises, bad noises. Everything is straight. Get my little clothes pins out, my best friends, when I'm gluing something like this. All right, and I need to, again, train my paper to the fold. I should have done that before I put the clothes pins on, but that's okay. It still works. I'm just making sure everything is as it should be. Right, and so I am ready to glue this. And I am not gonna put glue on this side of this paper because I don't want to accidentally get it in the wrong place. So I'm gonna put all of my glue for this particular page on this side. I'm gonna be very careful that I don't get too much right around here. I don't need a whole lot because it is being wrapped around and it should get held in place pretty well by the rest of the paper being glued down. And then for the rest of this particular sheet, I'll just go ahead and making sure that I get the edges. All right, now to wrap this around. And I need to cut off some of this excess here because otherwise it's gonna be really bulky. But I don't wanna cut off all of it because I don't wanna mess with the edge being um, a raw edge. So I am going to go ahead and continue this fold. And then I'm just gonna cut, leaving about a quarter of an inch. Of a flap so that I can glue it down. And I'll glue that down first. I think that I need to trim that just a bit so I don't have a bump. Did a better job down there. <laughs> All right, so just a little glue along here. A little more than that. There we go. And then I will go ahead and just put glue on this whole piece, making sure I get all the way up to the edges or out to the edges, whichever term is better, I'm not sure. So 
seem to have a gloop in my glue. I need to transfer this to my other bottle. Just haven't done it yet. My other Sugar Bell bottle is much easier to squeeze. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Now, I have some edges showing here, and that's not sticking to itself very well. It may be just the paper is not, not the best thing for gluing to itself. It's just meant to be stuck in the front of a photo album. And I'm just gonna go over all my boo-boos real quick. I should have sliced a bit out of here. I'm afraid to do it now. So what I'm doing is, I, the way I put my signatures in you won't be seeing this part anyway so I'm just going to try to smooth that bump down into the part where it's not going to show and I'm not going to worry about that right now I don't worry about a whole lot of things when it comes to journaling because you can pretty much always fix something all right, so I am going to leave that at that for right now. I'm going to come back later and I'll do something with the edges. I'm just not sure what I wanna do yet. I might just take um, a piece of scrap paper and fold it over and just sandwich the top like I did this first edge here and sandwich the bottom because I don't think that would interfere too much with the rest of it, and it would still keep it cohesive. We'll find out. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. I don't usually do work with me's because I get nervous that people are gonna say she is crazy. Well, if you've watched all the way through this, you will know that I am not right. Anyway, thank you for joining me today, and as always, be kind. Bye.